Is that yes? I'm, I'm so sorry. excited. I've had a great day. What are you excited about? Like great, you know, usually I come in here and something happened right before I walked in that pissed me off. This time, like, nothing bad has happened. In fact, everything good has happened today. I am so happy because I am morphing into a true... What is it when you, like, are happy, then sad, then happy, then sad? It's called bipolar. Happy, then livid, pissed, bipolar. then crying, then happy? That's me. <laughs> it's not a sociopath because you have feelings. That's good. Psycho. Uh, psycho. Uh, uh, schizophrenic. A little bit. Schizo? Schizophrenic a little bit. I'm Josh Sigmund, and I'm a mortgage lender. I'm also a geek for money, not just earning it and saving it, but literally everything about it. I love that money has rules. It has its truths. I love investment strategies, and I love making money work for us. For so many, money is emotional. For me, it's logical, like a puzzle. My passion is also helping others with their money. I love looking at people's finances, dissecting their puzzle, and rebuilding with strategy and purpose. And I'm really good at it. I'm making this podcast about my money strategies, not the things that are written in books or sold in programs. It's a podcast outlining the lessons I've learned and used for the past 15 years. These strategies help me and those who use them save more, give more, create wealth, and retire early. Let me teach you how to build your net worth. You ready? Welcome to Sigmund Sense. Welcome back to Sigmund Sense, another episode of season two, and it's actually going to be probably a four-part, five-part, eight-part series. We're not really sure. It's going to go on for a while. I mean. And the reason is, is that, uh, as you might have seen from the promo video, we are going to be talking about lots of stuff outside of just money. Uh, what I'm excited about for this year is, uh, yes, we'll be talking about a lot about money, but we're also going to talk about a lot of business concepts and life concepts, and I'm a big believer in working on, uh, on money, on time management, uh, working on joy, working on leadership and management skills, mm -hmm. working on books, talk about book stuff. I mean, I mean, there's just lots of my, we just released I want to talk about. a beast. Let me out of my shackles. Because I want to talk about other stuff. the opportunities are endless, endless now, endless. but what I do love is that at the end of the day, we finances are the cornerstone yeah. and we already got all that shit out of the way. So we could just the go basics. revert back to season one That's right. to check yourself well, and, in the and money department. What, uh, one of the things my mentor told me years ago about uh, money is that if it's true, it's not new. If it's new, it's not true. Right? So when you think about concepts about money. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. here's an idea. Spend less than you earn. That's how you save <laughs> Um, that's not going to ever change. That's an old concept. Uh, I like to test that. Theory. Right. Test that theory. Right. We'll make up new laws about how this doesn't exist. I've right? tested it for years. So, <laughs> right. so we're going to talk about uh, organizing your life. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot about time management and a lot of people are not going to think this applies to you, but I promise it does because as we weave through these next couple episodes, we're going to talk about, uh, um, you know, what time management really is and it and isn't. It's about getting more of what you want out of life, whether that's in business, whether that's mm -hmm. in your finances, whether that's at home, with your spouse, with your kids, with your health, uh, with your spirituality. Time management, if done well, moves the needle faster towards what you want. So, And what I love, too, is that it actually equals freedom and yes. more time. And people think that following a calendar is restrictive, and that's not the case. 100%. That is the biggest miss. Conception, perception, what's the word? Misperce misconception. Mis misconception. Yeah. yeah. Is that, especially when we start going through some of the things that you and I both do that, yeah. you know, keep us on track every day, it does sound super aggressive and a little constricting. Mm -hmm. And r the reality is, oh my gosh, it's just now we have all this other time to do other things. Well, even said a different way, like I know that uh, when it comes to time, uh, I've, I've used the analogy about college a lot for myself or high school, it doesn't matter. But uh, whenever oh, I was yeah. given a assignment that was going to be, you know, first day of class, they say, uh, hey, you got to write this report due May 15th on January 1st. It's like, cool, I'll write that shit on May the 14th because <laughs> so given true. enough time, I'll waste it. Right? So this is what I do. I'm like, I'm going to be so good and I'm going to do a little bit every day. And then I don't do a little bit every day or the next day or the next day. And then I just stress about it the yep. whole time. <laughs> Idle hands are the devil's work, right? It's terrible. So, so yeah. So, and the other piece of it, of what I think good time management does is it actually ensures 
that you're doing what you want to do, like what matters most to you, what, I do agree uh, with that. what your business needs most of you, what your family needs most of you, what you want most for yourself. And so, um, and I'll give you an example of why I know this is true too. Like I love my parents. I love my mom and dad. Um, when I get super busy at work occasionally, a couple weeks <laughs> go by and I forget one, to call yeah. my mom and dad. And it's yeah. not because I don't love them. It's because uh, I was doing other things. And let's be honest, the older you get, the more crazy your life becomes, you yeah. know, certainly with kids and families and mm -hmm. uh, uh, responsibilities with businesses. And, and uh, even as an employee, the responsibility adds up over time. Does, yeah. And so, um, so I literally calendar time to call my mom and dad. Not because I'm going to never call them, but it's because I would rather call them more often, more sure. regularly, and they appreciate that. And top of mind always yep. helps when you see it on your calendar. Yeah, so uh, what I want to talk about first and, and interject if you have additional questions, but what I wanted to kind of give a framework, I think that a lot of people, they'll go to a one-hour class about time management, and they're like, oh, I know I know this, and and they or they assume they do, and they fill up their calendar with useless shit in the wrong order and all sorts of stuff, right? Yes. And... And so the reason why this will be a couple hours in totality over a couple of different episodes, mm -hmm. only 30, 40 minutes a day, don't worry, just it's, this is maybe a little bite-sized piece, is like, because it, season two. it is a, <laughs> right, it is a, it is a process to get it right, because you're going to yeah, change is, and you're going to hear is. some elements, but what I really want to uh, give you in uh, ideas to think about first and foremost is what the goals are of time management. I actually love that you started there, by the way. I didn't oh, tell you that you. earlier. I appreciate um, that. Because I feel like um, it has a lot of remnants of how we started 2020, which so was true. how to properly goal set. Yep. And a lot of that starts with what do you really want? What do you want? Yep. What do you really want? So it's kind of cool that... you know, looking back, did you accomplish everything you wanted last year? Well, and arguably a... 2020 was a fantastic year. Yeah. Yep, um, not for everyone, but not for, for everyone, us, pretty but good. For, yeah. we, I mean, I know personally, I accomplished so many things mm -hmm. that were on my list, but I spent more time than ever yep. dialing in what it is that I want and why and how bought in and convicted am I? Convicted is truth, yeah. You know, um, so, so it's cool. let me give, give the goals and then I'm going to give you for homework the questions to ask yourself to make sure you get it right because. I really feel like if you don't take enough time up front to understand the goals and, and answer the questions correctly, then you're starting with a framework that is not going to bring you joy or might take you down the wrong path. Yeah. Uh, and you might be more frustrated, which I think is why a lot of people quit calendars. That's what I was going to say. Right? Yeah. A lot of people quit. So goal one is to reduce the number of decisions you make per day. Like the goal, goal of organization time management. Like when I wake up, People ask me, hey, what are you going to do today? It's like exactly what my calendar tells me to do. Right. I don't you know. know. Let's look. I don't have to think about <laughs> it. Like I wake up and the first thing on my calendar is go work out. So yeah. guess what I do? I go work out. And and every minute of my day from basically 6 a.m. until at least 6 p.m. If there's kids sports or kids, you know, something like that, at least 6 p.m. is accounted for. Yeah. Um, and people are like, oh, that sounds exhausting. Josh. like, no, no, no. I'm really doing everything I want to do or what I should be doing. Nothing else. Right. Sure. But every minute's accounted for. So. Uh, because I know where to go because my calendar tells me to, I have to make fewer decisions. Um, and that's really a big goal of this, uh, of organization time. Huge. Management as a whole. I love the, re the reduction of decision-making because what, um, what is it? The book game changers talks about, we only have an, a certain a finite number of decisions, finite number of decisions we can make per day. And so, yeah, we got to use yeah. them wisely. It's why doctors do operations in the morning guys. It's not because they were yeah. like doing it at 6am. It's because they're freshest in the morning when they're, you don't want them to be making mistakes on you later <laughs> in the day. Right. <laughs> number two, to keep you focused on what matters most at work with self and at home. Right. So there, uh, another goal of your calendar when done correctly is just to make sure that if you're going to do something, you're doing what matters most. If you're going to set aside, if you've got 12 hours of daylight or 15 hours of being awake time, mm -hmm. that you get the most important things done first, right? At least get that done. Not everything gets done all the time. We understand that. But at least get the most important things done. Um, the third thing is to help you progress towards what you want in the next year, five years, or in your life, right? Um Meaning that there's a difference between being busy, doing busy work, and being busy at building what you want, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of us will wake up at the end of the year. I've done this over the course of my career, several years, where I couldn't tell you I was any further ahead 
in my career, my life, my body, my wealth, my anything than the previous year. Ugh. Ugh. And it's kind of a dirty feeling. It's, it's the like, worst. I have those. I know I did a lot, but I, I'm not sure what the well, hell I did. Well, the worst is like, oh my gosh, you get the, to the end of the day and it's like, well, I am exhausted. I literally cannot pinpoint what the well, hell happened today. What got accomplished? What like, moved the needle? What happened? Right. Oh my gosh. Like there's those days are very few and far between. Thank goodness at this point. Mm -hmm. But they still do creep up and they are still terrible. It's real. It's real. Yep. The, the next one is uh, to reduce day-to-day -day stress and fatigue, right? So time management, part of it is helping you identify uh, what your wins are for the day. And because you calendar it and you get those things done that you can't mess up unless you choose to, and I'll get into that later on in, a, in, the, in a, this episode or a later one, uh, what it actually does, the byproduct is it removes stress and fatigue and allows you to go faster or longer. Um, one thing I'm really clear about, especially if you're in an ownership position or a sales type position and shit, any employee for that matter, the reality is, is that you can't be at your best every day easily. You know, you, that's where you hear this, this concept of burnout, right? And so what a lot of people do is they start to put the governor on because they have to pace themselves. So they're really only working four hours a day. They're not working eight hours a day. They're effective <laughs> maybe four hours a day. And we're very clear about this. There's lots of studies from MIT. There's lots of books about this thing where, you know, an average employee works three to four hours a day of what they're supposed to be doing. That's what they're being paid on and everything else is wasted, uh, which is crazy. But that's how they pace themselves to not burn out as opposed to um, really giving 100 percent, whatever that means to you for the full 40 and then being done and then really giving 100 percent for the, your family when you get right. home. The full 40, whatever that means to you. Yeah. It's super important to understand that. That's super interesting. I do want to add something really quick because I thought about this today is that the more dialed in your calendar is and the more effective and efficient you are, you can really, really, um, you can be more in tune with what you truly have time to say yes to. And when you are really out of time mm -hmm. to say no, yeah. and that is an easy, so it's most of us struggle with saying no. We want to say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. But if I know for sure that my calendar is dialed in and I look at taking on a new task or a new project, Oh, you're stealing from the future. That's goal five. And if I, oh, it is. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> just so we're, excited. We're jump aligned ahead. on it. We're aligned on it. Cause that's what number five is, is allow yourself to remove clutter from your calendar. Yeah. Because, uh, without feeling bad about it. And that's the key is you're a pleaser. I know you are. I'm a pleaser. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to say yes to my wife. I want to say yes to my kids. I want to say yeah. yes to my employees. I want to say yes to my business partners. I want to say yes to my clients. I want to say yes. Of course I've got more time. It's flattering when you ask me to do something. Yeah. Right. But how do I say no and, and not feel bad about it? And Absolutely. So, and I can tell you from a boss and employee perspective. So, you know, if you ask me to do something or you want me to start on a new project. Mm -hmm. It is after being able to prove that I do understand my calendar and know how to work it. So when I say I can't do it now, mm -hmm. the trust that goes along with that is huge. Mm -hmm. Um, but it also makes me feel at ease because I know that I'm making a good decision in the moment and it's not like it's a no forever because as soon as I do have time, it'll be very, very clear to mm -hmm. me that the time has become available and now mm -hmm. I can put it in there. Mm -hmm. And so it keeps really nice boundaries around. Boundaries is a great word for time. Yeah. It actually helps a lot. And then uh, the last thing that I'll put in here, I think is a really, a real big goal of time management as a whole is to allow and bring more joy and accomplishment into your day to day mm. and your week to week, not for the year. Like how do you actually have more joy in your day and how do you actually have feel more accomplished in the day to day and the week to week? And it's by strategizing with your calendar to give you opportunities to win mm -hmm. regardless of what's going on in your life. Because God knows shit, look at 2020 curveballs are coming. There's going to be no more this kidding, year. Right? Who knows what's going to happen this year. No kidding. I just feel like I just got a flak jacket on and something's going to hit me and I'll figure it out. <laughs> just, right. Um, but just wait. It's, it's coming. <laughs> I don't even want to know what it is. Honestly, it's like, <laughs> shit, I'm just going to be happy do until something hits I me. I mean. Right. But um, here's some questions that I ha ask myself all the time. And you know this about me. And so I'm curious if there's any additional questions that you would ask. But what I would encourage everyone to do, and this is the homework piece of this, and this is what you need to take some time doing and not rush through it. 
before you start slapping stuff together in your calendar <laughs> based on what some other person told you 10 years ago. Um, <gasps> trust me thing. on this. Like this is almost two decades now of working on it and working on it and working on it. I love that you um, said that because somebody else or you've read in books that this is what it's supposed to look like yep. and this is what's supposed to be on the calendar. Yep. Avoid and those. It's just, no, that's what's supposed to be in that person's calendar. That's not supposed like Bryn's calendar and my calendar are different. I'll point out a couple of things later on in that I like back to back to back to back right. to back. I can't handle space. In fact, it's really funny. I come off as blunt to some people and a little bit aggressive because when I sit down a podcast, I'm like ready to go or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, no, oh, we haven't had a chance to chit chat yet. And I get that sometimes about myself, right? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? Let's go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Stop talking. <laughs> Let's go. Right. Um, but it's, it's interesting as opposed to having adequate time <laughs> <laughs> to get somewhere yeah. to prepare, which yeah. is good for you, right? So our, yes. our time management techniques are different, <laughs> but it serves us. Serves us. That's and the so thing. So the yeah. questions that I put down that that matter most to me, and I always think about these things when I'm re-looking at my calendar, which I redo every other month, every quarter at most. I redo my calendar. Um, small tweaks now, not big ones, mm -hmm. but I redo yeah. it. The first one is what makes me happy, right? Um, a lot of books will tell you, a lot of people will tell you, Always work on your weakness. I'm not saying don't work on your weakness, but certainly do more of your strength for sure. Because mm -hmm. guess what? You probably are happiest doing is what you like doing, what you're probably good at, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But that applies at, at work and at home. And I don't want to put words, things in your mouth. But what I would say is when I ask myself what makes me happy, it's pretty easy for me. Um, at work, I want to be in uh, tighter proximity relationships with key people. Mm -hmm. Not everybody. With key people. Uh, like I know who my friends are. Uh, I know who my best business partners are. I know who my best employees are. I just want to be with them more, right? That makes me happy. That's not work for me. That's just quality time hanging out together with old friends, right? Um, I know at home, I don't need four hours with my family, but a 30 minutes of quality, quality time. Quality time. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Shooting baskets, throwing the baseball. Yeah. Christy loves coffee before the day gets started. Like, yeah. hey, Josh, you're about to rush off for the entire day. Can we just have coffee for 30 minutes? Like, yeah. th those things do make me happy. And then I personally need at least an hour and a half every day by myself. So the by myself time for me that makes me happy, for example, is um, working out, doing gratitude journal, reading the Bible for me or, or, or listening to it, um, going to my ranch and literally mowing the lawn, uh, those things make me happy. It brings me joy. Um, and then the last thing I would put on that for me that makes me happy is what is moving the needle for my business. Like there's a lot of mundane stuff I have to do that we all have to do. But what makes me happy is those activities that might be only a few a week, but are really moving the needle in my business, right? So the first question you've got to ask yourself is what actually makes you happy? The second question is, and there's a big difference between these two questions, so make sure you're listening. What makes you feel accomplished? What makes me happy it doesn't necessarily make me feel accomplished. Like sometimes I feel guilty uh, being by myself. Like it's taking time from work. Right. It's taking time from my wife. It's taking time from my kids for me to be by myself. So it's different. What makes you happy versus what makes you feel accomplished? Uh, it's so true. It's so true. Right? That's that was such um, that was a good explanation and analogy of it because you know I think. As a mom, we deal with this a lot, you, we deal a with lot, it more than men a do, lot, a lot. In my opinion, yeah. Um, and so it's always the it's the mom guilt. We always feel bad about where if we doesn't matter what it is, if it's not something for the family, with the family, to benefit the family, then it's the wrong thing to be doing, and that's so not fair. And so or true or true or true. And Randy and I talked about this um, at the end of 2020, and it was, you know, I got to go on a girls' trip to Washington D.C. And in the back, it's a bucket list trip. One of my girlfriends moved up there. In the back of my mind, I never thought it would really happen. Why? Because how can a mom of three with a full-time job go away for five days, you know, by myself? Like that's, and. That's so not true. And so at the end of the year, he and I and when I told Rady that, he said, then that needs to be the new front and center goal moving forward. Like there is no reason nope. why that should not be something 
that is super real and super reality <laughs> for us. Wholesome friendships, wholesome friendships are mandatory in my family. It was wholesome family trip. Wholesome it was the yeah. best time. Yeah. We had the best time. It did wonders for all all this. Yeah. All and this. absence <laughs> makes the relationships at home grow funder oh too, right? Oh my gosh, it does. I couldn't wait to see them. Make yep. me miss you. <laughs> but so understanding what makes you feel accomplished uh, yeah. is the difference. And so, what are some examples of that? Um, so, I, you know, I'm technically in sales and I'm proud of it, and I'll be in it till the day I die of some sort, right? I was a bartender first, and then then on so on and so forth, but. Uh, I know for sure that making a few outbound phone calls every day, just a few where I am. It does. It feels so good. It is. <laughs> it makes me feel accomplished. It, it makes me feel accomplished. Yeah, some of you so like your freaking list to be checked off or highlighted, right? <laughs> That's so some great of you, too. you're accomplished. <laughs> if I have five things and I can check all five things off by the end of the day, you feel accomplished, right? <laughs> you got to know what makes you feel accomplished because if you don't, that's probably uh, one of the causes of that. Uh, nagging sensation that you're not that you're busy but you got nothing done mm -hmm. because you weren't really clear about what you were trying to accomplish for the day yeah, or so what, what moves needles so that's the second question the third one is uh, and this is a two-prong question because I think that's something we all need to address what is the most important decision you are facing and or what's the biggest hole in your business or life right now what's the most important decision you're facing and or What's the biggest hole in your business or life right now? So what I mean by that, um, a lot of us don't deal with what needs to be dealt with, right? So I've talked about before in a previous podcast last year that we all have a ship. All of our ships yeah. are sinking. There's water level on the side of the ship and the hull of the ship. Below water level, there's big holes, little holes, cannonball holes, bullet holes, right? And most people start to fix the stuff that matters the least. The little bullet holes that they put their finger in. Because it's easy. The, the ship is still going to sink, right? Yeah. Uh, a big example for all of us, especially right now with COVID going around, is people don't deal with their health. Yeah. Like the doctor says, you're going to die if you keep the shit up, and they don't change it, right? Yeah. They're not dealing with it. Um, so dealing with face-on through time management to set aside appropriate time to work the problem, whatever yeah. the biggest decision you're facing like, I'm about to leave my job. I needed to choose. I'm about to leave college. Who am I going to go work for? I'm, yeah. you know, I'm thinking about having a child this year or whatever. Sure. Like, what are you doing to work on that? Well, that's actually schedule some sex. That's a good answer. I'm uh, <laughs> just joking. Kind of. Um, hey, but, priorities are priorities. And they well, need to be technically for the time management, there are certain times <laughs> of the month that you're more fertile than others. Right. I mean, like, got to know those things. But my point is, is that uh, if you're not working through time on what the biggest holes are, they'll fix themselves and usually to your detriment. Like the, mm, the hole is going to yeah. sink the ship more than likely if it's not dealt with. Right. Yeah. And so that's got to be addressed whether you like it or not, because that's the negative side of, of the world that we have to handle. But the positive side then is last one is what are your top priorities for the year? And if you understand what your top priorities for the year are, then You've got a real basic building block. All these questions to answer. What makes you happy? Did you schedule time for that? What makes you feel accomplished? Is there time to handle that? What is the most, uh, the biggest decision you're facing or the biggest problem you, you're, you're handling right now? Have you scheduled time to fix that, handle that, work on it? And what are your top priorities for the year? Um, are you actively setting aside time daily and weekly to work on those priorities or not? That gives you really sound building blocks to really put together a good uh, calendar that works for you, not that you're yeah. working for, right? Um, so to me, those are the only questions that matter when you're building them in. What did I miss? What other question might you ask? Or what else do you so, think about before you start the ca calendar? Well, I'm going to ask this question. It's not, yeah. it's not what you just said. But so I think when people think calendar they're thinking appointments mm. so if you are not somebody that works by appointment which there are plenty of people that do not work by appointment only um what what does that look like in their calendar you know because it's no i love that and, and actually in the next episode i think we'll probably focus more on home you know running the home life you know ask you a lot of questions on that one but um but the basic, uh, let me just Sarah, share something that people aren't going to always like. People that have calendars are more effective in life than people that don't. They get more done in life mm -hmm. than people that don't. I'm just, 
And so then, whether or not they have a job and appointments, uh, if you are a, a, a stay-at-home husband or wife, right? It doesn't matter. Stay or at home. maybe a, someone who has retired. Or you're and retired. Still have a very active social life. Yeah, I love know? it. I love it. Um, there are people that will wait around for the phone to ring to have their, hopefully somebody invites me out mm-hmm. versus people that plan their bunco night, uh, right? There are people that... That's such a great example. Uh, there okay. are people that uh, are going to clean the garage this week, but I they're not going to clean it today, right? Uh, there are, and the ones that are going to schedule time to clean it today will actually move the needle in cleaning that. And I instead of that. thinking in one week increments, mm-hmm. oh, this, you know, my, my, my kids are at school this week, so I've got all this time to do A, B, and C this week. Yeah. It's, well, shit, you actually have eight hours. Like, how much time do you really need? You can do all those things all by those noon things. today <laughs> yes. if you just set aside the time. Yeah. So that's, that's my answer is uh, if you want to get the most out of life, like people, like you said at the beginning, people, some people feel it's very restrictive to have calendars. It's very freeing for me to have a calendar. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes me feel more accomplished in my day, my week, my month. Uh, I'm more likely to achieve what I seek out to achieve. Uh, my goals are more often accomplished. My New Year's resolutions are more often accomplished mm-hmm. than people that wing it and hope for the best without a calendar. I also think maybe too, you know, it gives a little more purpose to the day. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking about, you know, if it is someone that maybe has retired and doesn't, you know, have a job to go to. Well, if they have things on their calendar for the day, getting up and getting dressed so you're ready for that. Um, If it's a stay-at-home parent, you know, that kids are maybe in school or whatever, you know, just giving giving you more purpose to get up and get going and get accomplished. And all of that is probably a good... A good way to frame it out as I think well. that's right. And, and so I think what we'll end this episode with, and I'll kind of lead into the next episode, is um, I want, I'm going to say this every episode because I think it's super important to live by your calendar's a reflection of your priorities. Yes. Right? So what kind what, of story, I want you to, what yeah, story does your calendar what tell? What story does it tell and do you like it? Right? Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people, if you say, hey, uh, random person on the street, what are your priorities in life? A lot of people, a very common answer that everyone's heard for sure is, well, I prioritize God, then my family, then work. Um, and then you say, cool, let me see your calendar, which half of them don't have. Yeah. But the other half, if you look at their calendar, would their calendar say that you pri- prioritize God, family, and work in that order? That's, yeah. And that's yeah. not the case for most people. And I'm not saying your order needs to be God, family, and then work. But that's a such, your, I mean, I, your, I knew what you were going to say. Yeah. Before, and I didn't, even, I didn't know what you were going to say. I knew what you were going to say. Your priorities should be what the calendar says. So yeah. what I want you to think about when we build out this calendar over the next couple of episodes is uh, if some random person read my calendar and that's all they knew about me, what story would it tell and do I like it, right? And uh, would they have an idea yeah. of what my priorities really are or not? And so the framework for me that I build my calendar about and then we'll move on to the next episode is... Um, I start with, uh, I start with me and spirituality first. So you're saying like, what, you don't have appointments. Well, the first thing that's on my calendar every day is workout Workout. and followed by get ready and get to school. Or if like two days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, I'm dropping kids off to school, but I journal and I read and I listen to the Bible all before I get to work. Get to work. Yeah. And most of the time when I get to work. I'm making calls before I get to work because those are my priorities, which we'll get into. Then I've got my work appointments, my leadership appointments, my management appointments, my sales appointments, my all those things that some of us have to do more than others. Mm-hmm. But then the end of the calendar is go home time. Get your ass home. <laughs> kids sports. <laughs> yeah. Things like that that mm-hmm. are family based. So if somebody said, well, what is your priority? I say, well, First thing in the morning, I'm working on me and my relationship with God and my, my, my phys- physical fitness, right? Yeah. Self and that, that's my priority. Then I'm working on, on business only because family doesn't get home to be worked on until five o'clock. But when they're home, I'm working on them. So that's the overall framework I want you to think about. Um, I love it. So next and, time we're going to yeah. be talking about what's the second step to this? Well, the second step is, and this is why I want to lean on you a little bit more, because I do think that a lot of, yes, there's single uh, fathers too, but I do feel like single mothers and or working mothers have a bigger load um, than guys do in, in some cases, in a lot of cases, yeah. most cases. Uh, and so what I want to talk about is 
this time management and organization is not just at work. Right. So I want to know it, yeah. how do you organize your thoughts and your time at home so that you can be the most effective employee or business owner when Boom. you get to work. Right? Boom. I love so it. So that's what we want to talk about in the next episode. Uh, homework this time around, answer those questions for yourself. Like Absolutely. be honest with yourself. Make sure you're really clear about what, what rings your bell, what makes you happy, what doesn't. And, uh, and then we'll be able to build off that, but I love it. I'm so excited. Yeah. Questions, cool. comments, concerns, where, where do people reach us? Uh, send all of those to Sigmund at gmail.com and any feedback you have, we love and, um, and appreciate all of that. Tell your friends, subscribe, like, share, comment, all the things, all the things <laughs> like don't dislike like or go away. <laughs> like. <laughs> until no, no, next no, time. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm just joking. <laughs> Cheers. Until, until next time. We'll see you on Sigma <laughs>